Now that we know how to calculate our trend line, we need to look at calculating our seasonal variation. Now there's two different models for calculating the seasonal variation. The first of those is the additive model. If we're applying the additive model, then we just assume that our actual sales for a particular time period will be equal to our trend plus the seasonal variation. If that is the case, then we can just move this equation around a little bit and say that the seasonal variation will be equal to our actual figures minus our trend. And we just use this equation then to work out our seasonal variation. We're going to continue with the same exercise we were looking at in the previous session. So we had three different years sales for four quarters in each of those years and we've already calculated our centred moving averages figures. Now we can use all of this to work out the seasonal variation. Our sales figures are our actual figures, so our actual sales. The centred moving average is our trend. So we can calculate our seasonal variation then as our actuals minus the trend. So if we look at then our first quarter with a centred moving average, which is Q3 of year one. Our seasonal variation then for this quarter will be our actual figure, 34, minus our trend of 29.5. So our seasonal variation is 4.5. Likewise for Q4 year one, our seasonal variation will be 44 minus 30, which gives us 14. In Q1 of year 2, our seasonal variation will be our actuals, 22, minus our trend of 30.5. So we get minus 8.5. Now we would expect to get a negative figure for the seasonal variation of quarter 1. If we have a look at our sales information, we already know that we expect sales to be higher in quarter three and quarter four. Whereas in quarters one and two, our sales are much lower. So what our seasonal variation is telling us is that in quarter one, our sales will be 8.5 below our trend. Our seasonal variation then for quarter two will be 20 minus 31.5 gives us minus 11.5. For quarter three of year two, we have 38 minus 31.5 gives us 6.5. Quarter four of year two, 48 minus 31 is 17. Finally then, for quarters one and quarters two of year three, our seasonal variations are minus 13.5 and minus 13. So if we have a look then at the seasonal variation information we have just calculated. We do have a little bit of a problem. For quarter three of year one we have calculated a seasonal variation of 4.5. Whereas for quarter three of year two our seasonal variation is 6.5. So we have two different seasonal variations for quarter three. Now the reason our figures are slightly different in each year is because we're just using our centered moving averages to estimate the seasonal variation. So in this case, because we have two different seasonal variations for each quarter, 
we are going to have to calculate the average seasonal variation. So we'll set up a table in a new sheet. We've got our four quarters and we're just going to add in to our table the seasonal variations we have calculated for each of our three years. For year one then, we don't have a seasonal variations for the first two quarters. We got 4.5 and 14 for quarters three and four. In year two, add in the seasonal variations we've calculated. And finally in year three, we only have seasonal variations for Q1 and Q2, excuse me, which were minus 13.5 and minus 13. So all we have to do is calculate for each quarter the average seasonal variation. So for quarter one, our average will be minus 8.5, minus 13.5, all divided by 2. And we get an average seasonal variation then of minus 11. What we are saying then is for quarter 1, our seasonal variation is that our actual sales will be 11 below our trend line. For season 2, our average, or for quarter 2 rather, our average seasonal variation minus 11.5 minus 13 divided by 2 gives us an average of minus 12.25. So in quarters 1 and 2 then, our sales are below the trend line. Our average seasonal variation for quarter 3, 4.5 plus 6.5 divided by 2 gives us 5.5, positive. And for quarter 4, our average is 14 plus 17 divided by 2, you should get 15.5. So in quarters 3 and 4, our sales are above the trend line. <clears throat> so we've calculated our seasonal variations for each of the four quarters. Now we want to bring all of this information together and use it to forecast what our sales will be at some point into the future. So if we have a look at our exercise, we've been asked to calculate the seasonal variation and also forecast what the sales will be for quarter two of year four and quarter three of year five. Now, just a reminder then, in the previous session, we calculated that the trend is that there is an increase of 0 0.5 in sales per quarter. Remember, if we want to forecast with time series analysis, we need to know the trend and we need to know the seasonal variation. So the first thing we've been asked to do is establish what will our sales figures be for quarter two of year four. Well, we start with our most recently known trend point. We know that our average sales at Q2 of year 3 are 33. So we'll note that in. So our trend at Q3 year 3 is 33. 
So, if we are moving ahead to quarter two of year four, how many times will our sales increase by 0.5? So, how many quarters pass between Q3 of year three and Q2 of year four? So, this will be the increase in our trend. So, four quarters will pass during that time period. And in each quarter, our trend will increase by 0 0.5. So, overall, our trend will increase by 2. So, our trend at Q2 year 4 will be 35. Now we just need to adjust for our seasonal variation. If we look back at our seasonal variation calculations, we said that in quarter two, sales will be minus 12.25 below the trend. Which means in quarter two of year four, if we adjust for our seasonal variation, in Q2 is minus 12.25. So our forecasted sales will be 22.75. Remember, using the additive model, our actuals are equal to the trend plus the seasonal variation. And we've completed our bit of forecasting. Let's do it again to make sure we're all happy. We were also asked to forecast the sales for Q3 of year 5. So again, we start at our most recently available known trend point. So that'll be Q2 of year 3. That at that point, our trend is 33. Then we need to adjust for our increase in trend from Q2 year 3 up to Q3 year 5. So how many quarters will pass? I think if we count, it should be nine quarters with an increase of 0 0.5 per quarter, so that gives us 4.5 in total. So our trend then, at Q3 year 5, will be 37.5. Our final thing then is to adjust for our seasonal variation. In Q3, if we have a look at our table, our seasonal variation for Q3 is that sales will be 5.5 units above the trend. So if the trend is 37.5, then we would expect or our forecasted actual sales will be 43. And that's how we use our time series to forecast sales in the future using the additive model.